This is the third bike form Royal Enfield to use the 350 single-cylinder platform, but despite sharing its power unit with the Classic and Meteor, the Hunter 350 is a new bike. There's a new chassis, wheels, dimensions and weight, and it's the lightest bike in the current Enfield range. The Hunter 350 has been designed to take on the urban environment with sporty and relatively light 17-inch wheels front and back a first for Royal Enfield. Overall weight is down compared to its 350 cousins, while its wheelbase is shorter and the steering head steeper. The Hunter 350 has primarily been designed for the Indian and emerging markets riding environments in which a 350 is considered a middleweight. Over 80% of Royal Enfield's global sales come from India alone, and the design and production teams, split between the UK and India, wanted to make a bike that was accessible on price and size, agile, comfortable, lightweight, stylish, and modern for that audience. The air-cooled SOHC 349cc single is identical to that in the Classic 350 and Meteor 350. This translates to a modest 22 bhp at 6,100 revolutions per minute and 27 newton meters at 199 pound-feet of torque at 4,000 revolutions per minute. Enfield claimed to have played with the fuel injection to give the Hunter a sharper feel on the throttle and quote a top speed of 114 kilometers per hour. 71 miles per hour, which is actually achieved in fourth gear and not top, there are no riding modes or rider aids, just twist the throttle and go. At tick over, the two valve 350 is almost silent, without a rev counter, and in busy, noisy central Bangkok it's sometimes hard to tell if the motor is running, with only mildest of vibrations to give the game away. A few times I had to blip the throttle just to make sure we were ready for the drag race versus approximately 50 scooters, away from each set of lights. Once underway, there's a pleasant if rather mild burble from the Euro 5 compliant, fuel-injected motor. In acoustic-enhancing tunnels, you can detect a sense of urgency in the exhaust note. And aggressive down changes will incite the odd pop too, but it rarely gets too excited. And while I'm confident the Hunter will sound delightful chugging down a quiet B road back in the UK, it was mainly drowned out by the incessant din of downtown Bangkok. There is no hiding the fact the air-cooled 350 is as basic as they come. While its quoted 20 bhp peak is hardly likely to impress your mates, the engine platform has primarily been designed for the Indian and emerging markets where a 350cc is considered to be a middleweight bike, and also a noticeable step up from a 50 or a 100, in Thailand where we tested the bike, the Hunter was the king of the traffic light GP, and constantly surrounded by scooters and low-capacity bikes. In fact during five days in Bangkok, I saw fewer than 10 bikes with a capacity larger than 600cc. And anyway, there's more to life than lots of cubes and horsepower. Enfield's newest 350 comes with minimal fuel and servicing costs, and will last forever in Bangkok, one of the most congested cities in the world it was hard to fault. You could easily be fooled into thinking the Hunter 350 is just a meteor or classic with some fresh bolt-on parts, but engine aside is actually an entirely new bike. For the first time in Enfield's recent history, they've opted for 17-inch wheels front and back which are also considerably lighter than the rims seen on its stable mates, and a huge saving in unspring weight. The frame is new, with new down tubing designed for agility and cornering ability. The wheelbase is shorter and the steering is more aggressive than its 350 cousins in the Enfield range. Suspension is completely new, with 130mm travel at the front and 102mm at the rear, plus preload adjustment on the rear. The foot pegs are slightly higher and set back further, with the bike's claimed bank angle at 43 degrees. The sear tires have been specifically designed for this model, and while I'm sure they will last forever, I would prefer something European or Japanese on the rims. Initial riding impressions are very positive. The seat is low while the bike feels light, carrying its mass low in the chassis, and at slow speeds it's forgiving and very maneuverable. The steering lock delivers an extremely tight turning circle that's perfect for carving up the Bangkok traffic, and as soon as the wheels are turning it rides like a learner's dream, effortless fluent, and balanced with perfect throttle response.
The LCD clocks are neat and easy to read with a clear gear position indicator. They are on the basic side, but do the job digital speedo, two trips, clock and digital fuel level which never appeared to move. The single cylinder engine should prove incredibly frugal. Other 350 models in this range regularly average over 100 mpg if ridden sensibly, and Enfield quote 85 mpg. The low 790mm seat is accommodating for short riders, and there appears to be plenty of room and decent grab handles for the pillion. The ride quality isn't bad and the suspension is well supported, but the indifferent roads of Thailand didn't complement the ride with the front on the soft side the rear a little firm. Bear in mind that the bike has been designed to take not only the weight of the rider but a pillion plus heavy luggage. The brakes are best described as sufficient. The single disc and twin piston caliper setup up front is relatively basic but as mentioned, the Hunter 350 is primarily aimed at the emerging markets and new and young riders. At only 181 kilograms, its weight is down compared to other Enfield models that share the same engine platform, which makes it a relatively light bike, but still heavier than the Japanese and KTM competition. With little weight and modest power, the stoppers are just about all you'll need, and have a nice unintimidating feel at low speed as well. Two-channel ABS comes at standard, but it's not lean-sensitive. When activated, it feels more biased towards the rear. A reassuring and not overly intrusive intervention which again will boost the confidence of new and experienced riders. Given that the Hunter is aimed at new riders, it's a shame the brake lever isn't adjustable.